Hello students, warm greetings to you all. I am Dr. M. Bhushanam, Assistant Professor in the Department of Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. Take care of your good health during this pandemic situations. Well students, today we shall understand some of the specimens related to the phylum Silenterata or Nidaria and their first semester BSc Zoology Practicals, that is non cardata 1. As we all know that phylum Silenterata is also called as Nidaria includes the organisms that have tentacles or long thread like or finger like projections on their body which possess needoblast or poisonous cells or stinging cells in it. They have a primitive body ca cavity called uh, gastrovascular cavity or silenteron cavity. In this regard, the first organism that we are going to understand is hydra. Any organisms or specimens that we study will start with its systematic position, then a diagram with the major labeling parts and points that describes the characters of that particular specimen or the organism. So that way we are going to understand the first organism that is hydra which is commonly called as brown or green hydra. Its systematic position or classification is phylum Silenterata, class Hydrozoa, order Hydroida and genus is Hydra. Hydra is a tiny freshwater sessile organism. When I say fresh water, it lives in ponds, rivers, streams, etc. When we call the condition as sessile, it otherwise refers to, it will fix its body to the substratum that is available to it. And the organism has got a body which is tubular in shape, tube-like otherwise. Body is divided into two major parts. Number one, the basal part with which it will attach the body to the substratum and a free body part which is otherwise called as body proper that contains the tubular body which is uh, which has the free end and this free end has got an opening of mouth surrounded by many number of protective organs of the body called tentacles. There are two main colors seen in the species of Hydra, number one, brown color hydra, which is a common hydra that we find in the water. The second one is green colored hydra, which is called as hydra viridissima, which shows a symbiotic life, nothing but a mutual benefit relation 
with an algal form called as the zoochlorella. So zoochlorella is an algae which will remain within the body of the hydra and hence we call it as a symbiotic association where both gets benefited. So such hydra will appear to be greenish in color because of zoochlorella. The name hydra is given for this particular organism after the name of a sea snake in Greek mythology that had a nine heads in it. Besides these characters, the other characters it includes is the height of Hydra ranges from 1 to 2 centimeters of length, but body becomes short and globular when it gets retracted. When it gets retracted, the body becomes globe-like. The usual body appears like a polyp tube, that is, a tube with an opening of mouth surrounded by tentacles at its uh, oral end. Whereas the aboral end shows a pedal disc or peduncle or basal disc with the help of which the body of the organism will attach to the substratum because this part of pedal disc secretes adhesive secretions that help the animal to attach to the uh, substratum. So during locomotion the same pedal disc secretes a gas bubble that helps in the detachment of hydra from the substratum and float easily in the water. So the locomotion of hydra is facilitated by a gas bubble which is secreted by the pedal disc down in the uh, arboreal end. The oral end or head zone has an end part called hypostome. This has an opening of mouth which is surrounded by 6 to 12 tentacles. You know tentacles in turn consists of nematocytes or nidoblast or stinging cells which helps the organism to trap the food for the process of digestion. And below the hypostome, there is a cylindrical or tubular body which shows attachment of buds or sometimes even the mature animals will show presence of gonads on it. The tubular body is encloses a central cavity within which we call it as a Silentiron or gastrovascular cavity. As we have understood, Hydra has both the reproductive organs of male called testis, female called ovary, on the body of the same animal, hence it is said to be hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite refers to condition wherein both the male and female gonads are present in the same organism. Down in this slide, we can see a cross section of the body of ovary that attaches to the original body structure. And beside is the cylindrate organism of Hydra that shows almost all the characters such as tentacles, mouth, hypostome, testis, ovary, bud and basal disc. So this is about the major features related to the organism of Hydra. Now let us recollect back the important points that you should uh, uh, write during your examination on this particular specimen. Hydra are small freshwater organisms with a tiny tube shaped body. Body is called polyp structure 
because it encloses mouth surrounded by tentacles of 6 to 12 at its oral end. And this tentacles helps in the uh, trapping of food for the organism. The aboral surface, that is the opposite end of the uh, mouth area is called pedal discard peduncle, which is said to be flat and helps in the attachment of the body of organism to the substratum because it is secretory in function. It says to secrete the sticky substance or adhesive substance. Internally, hydra has a cavity called cilentiron or gastrovascular cavity. The external surface of the hydra shows presence of birds uh, uh, as well as the uh, reproductive structures like testis and ovary as the animal is hermaphrodite. So that's about the importance of hydra organism. The next important aspect that we shall concentrate upon is transverse section of hydra. That is the tubular structure of hydra when we take a transverse section or a horizontal section, how the body wall of hydra looks like. So that we are going to understand in um, the second is concept related to hydra called TS of hydra. Exactly when you take the cross section, the section will appear to be round like this as what you find down in this slide, showing the presence of um, the body wall and a cavity of gastrovascular cavity or cilentron at its center. If we could enlarge the body wall structure and observe, it shows the following important characters. Number one, the body wall of hydra is said to be diploblastic because the body wall of the hydra is made up of two tissue layers of an, which are derived from uh, both ectoderm and endoderm. Ectoderm forms the outer epidermis of the organism in its body wall and endoderm will form inner gastrodermis of the body wall. So outer epidermis, inner gastrodermis are the two body wall layers or tissue layers present for the body of the organism. And between these two layers, there is a, a separating a tissue part which we call it as mesoglia. It is not a tissue layer, but it is made up of loose uh, parenchymatous cells, which we call it as mesoglia. So st remember, students remember, the body wall of hydra is diploblastic and it has outer epidermis, inner gastrodermis, both are separated by means of mesoglia. The epidermis here act as the protective and sensory layer which is further covered over by a thin cuticle. So above in the slide, there is the, or the diagram of uh, hydra, part of the body wall when is enlarged, shows the features as what we see uh, uh, in this slide here. The epithelium that is seen in the ectoderm, outer ectoderm, consists of various groups of cells. Cells such as epithelial muscle cells, which helps in the covering of the body wall, as well as contraction of the body wall. And the second is gland cells. Gland cells secrete the secretory a sticky substance which helps the uh, animal to bind to the substratum in the peduncle region. Then between these epithelial muscle cells there are interstitial cells. Epithelial muscle cells are column like they are elongated nucleated cells. Between two epithelial muscle cells here and there you have certain interstitial cells which involves in the formation of reproductive, uh, 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 reproductive cells as well as the damaged cells replacement, that is regeneration. Then the ectoderm also shows presence of a special kind of stinging cells called as needoblast, which helps the animal to protect itself from their enemies. Then besides the epithelial muscle cells, 
gland cells, interstitial cells, and nidoblasts. We do have other types of cells or sensory cells that helps in the transmission of the impulses. The nerve cells help also helps in the transition of impulses and the reproductive cells or germ cells that involves in the process of reproduction. So, these are the different types of cells related to the outer ectoderm. The inner gastroderm is all consists of the following important cells that majorly involve in the process of digestion. It includes cells of nutritive muscle cells which are arranged in the circular muscle layer and help in uh, the nutritive functions. And in between these there are endothelial gland cells, gland cells. They are very smaller in size which produce the enzymes for the process of digestion. Besides this, there are also mucus glands that secretes the slimy fluid of mucus that uh, further helps in lubrication and paralyzing the uh, prey. Between these cells, there are interstitial cells which forms the uh, replacement of damaged cells or regeneration of the damaged parts. Besides this group of cells, there are also sensory and nerve cells which helps in transmission of stimulus when the prey is captured. Between the outer ectoderm and inner endoderm, that is epidermis as well as the gastrodermis, there is a middle layer which we call it as mesoglia. This mesoglia is made up of proteinaceous cell matrix. It serves as a supporting uh, part or supporting lamellar part for the attachment of outer ecto, uh, epidermis with that of the gastrodermis. So this is about the importance of uh, um, TS of Hydra. So what are the points that we should remember here? Classification will remain same as uh, uh, that of Hydra. And picture or the diagram, what you are supposed to write is uh, this particular features. Then, the points are hydra is diploblastic organism. So, it will have only two wall layers. Number one, outer ecto, uh, epidermis and inner gastrodermis. Outer ectoderm is formed from, I'm sorry, epidermis is formed from ectoderm and inner gastrodermis is formed from endoderm. So, between these two are a supportive a mat proteinaceous matrix part called as mesoglia. Epidermis acts as the protective and sensory layer which is again covered over by a thick layer of uh, thin layer of cuticle. Epidermis compo is composed of epithelial muscle cells, gland cells, interstitial cells, nidoblasts, sensory cells, nerve cells and germ cells. So the function of it you are supposed to describe. Whereas gastrodermis is made up of uh, nutritive muscle cells, endothelial gland cells, interstitial cells, mucus cells, sensory and nerve cells. And you will have to explain the function of each of these cell types. Then the, uh, between two lay wall layers is the presence of mesoglia made up of proteinaceous matrix that helps in the support of body wall. So that is about the importance of TS of Hydra. The next organism that we are going to understand under phylum C lenteridata is Obelia colony. Obelia is commonly called as C. Fa. So to start any organisms, we will have to start with its systematic position. So it includes uh, phylum C lenteridata, class Hydrozoa, order Hydroida and genus is Obelia. Obelia is another sedentary or sessile form of the organism which is said to be marine. It lives in the seawater and it is a colonial form. So it is not single individual organism but it is a group of living structures or together. Hence it is called colonial form. It is found uh, up to the depth of 80 meters in the seawater and it is found in the form of both asexual and sexual 
are forms. The colony of Obelia is said to be very delicate, very soft, and it is semi-transparent. You can see the inner parts of the organism, whitish to light brown in color, and shows branchings like that of a root and a stem of any plant. So the vertical branching like a stem, what you find is called as hydrocali, and root-like branches, what you find, which are horizontal in their position, are called as hydrorhiza. So hydrorhiza is horizontal part, and the vertical part is called hydrocali. So this is the diagram you are supposed to practice. Each vertical stem of hydrocali branches in the alternative way. So if this is the main stem portion, one branch, if it is towards the right side, the other branch will be towards left side. Alternatively, the right and left branches are seen. And ultimate branch that you find at the top consists of a special kind of zooid called as polyp or hydranth. Students remember, any polypoid structure will have a central mouth cavity surrounded by tentacles. So same feature is found even for this particular structure of polyp or hydrant, and hence it is nutritive in function. So it is a nutritive zooid. Then, in older forms of Obelia colony, you find in the branches what it shows, the presence of reproductive zooids also. Zooids are nothing but the living structures. They can act as an individual structures. Such individual structures are together in the colony, upholded by the, um, the uh, hydrocali. So these structures of reproductive zooids are called as gonangia or blastostyle. Reason is that these structures are responsible for the production of movable uh, uh, zooids, which are referred as the medusa. So remember, the branch of the hydrocali of Ubelia shows tentaculated uh, polyp, which is nutritive in function, and reproductive pol I mean, zooid called as uh, blastocyle uh, style or gonangium. Now, from this blastocyle or gonangium at the time of maturation, there comes out the um, uh, a special zooid called medusa. So other than medusa, the tentaculated polyp and blastostyle, if are present on the obelia colony, we call it as dimorphic colony, because only two types of the structures are seen, namely zooid of uh, polyp and zooid of gonangium. So this is in the immature condition, whereas during mature condition, trimorphic colonies are seen, where the gonangium will form the structures which is uh, half moon shaped and umbrella uh, structures, which is otherwise referred as the saucer shaped bodies, referred as medusae. Medusae are free moving structures, free swimming structures. So those structures, if are formed from a colony, another zooid type is added here, hence it is called trimorphic colony. So three types of zooids are seen here. Number one, the hydranth or polypoid structure. Number two, the blastostyle or gonangium. Number three, medusa. When three zooids are present in the colony, we call it as trimorphic colony. Now, the whole structure of uh, obelia consists of an outer covering, which we call it as uh, perisar and inner covering of tube called as sinosarc. Okay, perisarc and sinosarc. They are the coverings of the body of the obelia. Now, the polypoid hydranth acts as the nutritive zooid, which is hence also called as gastrozooid or tropozooid. Tropo refers to food here, the zooid which involves in the nutrition, the food. It is generally yellowish in color, which shows the radial symmetry, cylindrical in shape, having mouth opening surrounded by the uh, tentacles. And this region where the mouth is situated is called as hypostome. Now, the tentacles are 24 in number, 
and each tentacle is provided with the nematocytes or nematocysts. So they are special structures which helps in the capturing of the food, in di uh, ingestion of food, and also helps in the digestion of food. So that is about the polypoid um, zooid. Whereas blastostyle zooid or the reproductive zooids attached to the hydrocalic structure, which upon a sexual condition shows presence of the content of gonoangium filled with the uh, 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 cells of gonopores. Whereas, uh, it appears to be like a bud structure. Whereas, during the sexual maturation, during favorable condition, the uh, blastostyle opens and forms a new free swimming individual referred as the uh, medusae, which swim freely in the water by rupturing the, uh, open, uh, the covering of gono, gonangium called as gonothica. So besides this, the diagram which represents um, trimaphic colony attached to the hydrocalide. Well, students, what are the points that we should remember related to obelia colony? It is sedentary marine colonial form. It has a delicate body, which is trans semi-transparent and light brown color uh, to whitish in uh, color. The vertical branchings are called hydrocali and root-like branchings are called hydrorhiza. The hydrocali shows presence of uh, um, uh, branches, which is in the alternative manner that terminates with the nutritive zooid or polypoid structure. Now, the polypoid structure is yellowish in color, cylindrical in shape, encloses mouth surrounded by 24 number of tentacles. They help in capturing of food, ingestion and digestion of food. The older polyps shows presence of reproductive zooids called blastostyle or gonangium. Blastostyle will form during its sexual maturation saucer-shaped bodies which are free moving in the water called medusae. So when three types of zooids are present, we call the colony as trimorphic. So after we understanding the structural details of obelia colony, now we shall concentrate on medusa, the third type of zooid related to obelia. So besides the content, you have a diagram representation how this obelia forms the medicinal structure from gonangium. You can see the gonangium uh, will have the opening through which the medusae comes out and medusae is a saucer shaped structure which has uh, two surfaces. The surface, uh, uh, which is umbrella type, we call it as the upper, X umbrella, and down you have sub umbrella structure. So here is uh, the representation of sub umbrella um, view of the medusa structure. So what are these medusae? Medusae are small, transparent, solitary, that is single, free swimming, saucer shaped or bell shaped zooids formed from the obelia colony. Each of the zooid will have 6 mm of diameter and they are the reproductive structures because they produce their sex cells um, are the gonadal um, uh, gametes, uh, gamete cells. They have, as I said you before, umbrella shaped showing the upper X umbrella lower sub umbrella region. The X umbrella region is convex, sub umbrella region is concave. The sub umbrella region shows the presence of a central mouth and bears four gonads attached to the canals that runs from the um, mouth cavity. That we shall understand now. So when you look at the 
oral wave or the subambular region, it is spherical, as what you see in the diagram there. They show a short hollow quadrangular projection referred as manubrium. Manubrium ends with the opening of the mouth. So, mouth here is also rectangular or quadrangular in shape. So, it is present in the subambular surface. So, the structure of mouth will lead into a short tube of manubrium. The manubrium will be attaching to four radiating structure of this circular subambular region. Those radiating structures are called as radial canals. Whereas the uh, rim of or the uh, edge of this uh, spherical subambular region is formed by the circular canal. So it will show the radial canal. If this is the central point, you find radial canals, a four number. All these four radial canals are attached to a circular canal at its edge. So that's the importance of subambular region. So we have understood the mouth inside will lead into manubrium, manubrium cavity will lead inside into the cavity of um, a stomach or gastrovascular cavity or seal enteron cavity. The cavity also shows four radiating canals which we call this radial canal. Attaching to this radial canal are the gonads of the organism. So, the canals of radial type will be joining with the circular canals at its edge. This canal system helps in the process of digestion of food of the medusa organism. Now, the edge of the medusa is provided with a rudimentary fold or a shelf-like structure called as vellum. So, vellum is a band-like structure seen which shows the marginal region of the subambrilla structure. So, this margin is provided with number of finger-like projections called tentacles which are generally at the early stage of 16 in number, the number will increase with the age of medusa further. So, you can see the finger like projections seen on the uh, edge of margin which we call as tentacles provided with nematocysts. So, coming on to the points that we should remember is medusa are, medusa are small transparent single or solitary free swimming bell shaped structures are zooids which have a diameter of 6 mm. They are reproductive zooids because they produce the sex cells. The inner concave side we call it a subambrellar surface. The upper convex surface we call it as exambrellar surface. The subambrellar surface bears four gonads attached to the radial canals. Then a short hollow quadrangular projection is seen at the center of the radial canal or the uh, subambrellar surface which we call it as manubrium. The manubrium will end up with the square or four sided or quadrangular mouth. The mouth will lead into manubrium cavity then into gastrovascular cavity. The cavity further shows attachment to or connection to the four narrow radial canals. This radial canals will join with the circular canal at the edge of the subambrellar surface. The system of canal, uh, canals helps in the digestion of food. The edge of medusa at its the subambrellar surface shows a fold of um, structure which we call it as vellum showing the marginal tentacles of 16 number attaching to it. So, that is about the importance of uh, medusa. The next cilentrate animal that we are going to understand is Aurelia or jellyfish are commonly even called as moon jelly. The systematic position of Aurelia is phylum cilentrata, 
class Kyphosuma, order Disco, Medusae, and genus is Arelia. Arelia aurita is the scientific name of the jellyfish. These organisms are present commonly in the coastal waters of the temperate and tropical oceans of the world. So, it is a marine form and aquatic form. The body of Aurelia is transparent and bluish white in color. The, sh uh, uh, the transparent bluish colored body on its uh, upper surface shows presence of horseshoe shaped pinkish or reddish gonadal structures. They have the diameter of 5 to 40 centimeters. The body is very delicate, transparent. It shows the presence of sub, I mean, umbrella shaped body with horseshoe shaped gonads attaching on its upper surface or uh, X umbrella surface. There are four long narrow oral tubes that hangs downward from the lower surface surrounding the mouth. So, these structures are called as oral arms. Now, the body of the animal shows a convex surface called a exambrella, concave surface called as subambrella as what we have learnt in medusa form. It is a carnivorous organism which will feed on planktonic animals that is microscopic floating uh, uh, organisms of mollusk, worms, crustaceans, larvae, etc. The center of subumbrellar surface that is down shows a short inconspicuous that is indistinct tubular structure called manubrium. This manubrium will end up with the square shaped mouth or quadrangular mouth. Each corner of the mouth shows the projection of a long arm which is said to be delicate and surrounding the mouth hence it is called oral arm. This oral arms helps in the process of digestion by intaking the food. The oral arms have the ciliated grooves that will open into the mouth inside. And these ciliated grooves are provided with special kind of cells of the arms referred as nematocysts. There are special canal systems seen in the body of Aurelia at its um, oral or subamrella surface. It shows adradial canals. They are the canals present between two radial structures. Then also shows the presence of per radial canals, which are nothing but the false branchings of the tubes or canals seen between two adradial uh, canals. So, remember you have radial canals between two radial canal at its central is the adradial canal. Between the adradial canal and uh, of two numbers, you have the interradial canals. Between one adradial and one interradial canal, you have the special structures of per radial canals. Per radial canals are said to be highly branched. The reproductive organs called gonads are red or purplish in color. They have horseshoe shaped structure attaching to the body and it can be visualized at X umbrella surface. At sub umbrella surface, there is a circular margin which is broken into eight lobes by means of notches. Um, if this is a ring, it will be broken like this. It will be broken like this. So, it is called one notch. 
So like this, eight notches are there on the margin, which is provided inside with special uh, structures called as tentaculosis arophallium. Students remember, this tentaculosis arophallium is this uh, secretory organ, which is present in this marginal lapids. This margin of subambrella surface with the lapids and tentacles surrounding together is called as velarium. So similar structure like that of uh, um, Medusa. Now, between these notch structures, you have long finger-like projections or thread-like structures called marginal tentacles, which are provided with the cells of nematocysts, which helps in the uh, uh, process of protection for the individual organism. Aurelia is said to be dioecious species, which means sexes are separate, male and female are separate, but they doesn't exhibit sexual dimorphism. Otherwise, both males and females look similar. And males will have uh, the gonads of testis, females will have gonads of ovaries in them. They also appear similar in their uh, shape of hard shoe, attaching to the floor of the stomach. They are red to purplish in color. Upon the maturity, ova and this ova will produce the eggs, testis will produce the sperms, which are released into their gastrovascular cavity through the mouth, it will be expelled out. Now, fertilization may occur in the water or sometimes in the arms of them or stomach of them. So it could be internal or external, but they have a larval stage in their development, which is a ciliated and free living called as a planula larva. Students, here is the diagram that represents uh, the life cycle of Aurelia. So you can see down towards the extreme left uh, right side, there is a ciliated uh, free swimming planula larval stage. So points to be remembered here is Aurelia arita is commonly called as jellyfish, which is a marine form. It is single or solitary. That body is transparent, bluish white in color, Gonads are pinkish red. They do have uh, uh, X umbrella and sub umbrella surfaces. X umbrella surface will show the presence of gonads, and sub umbrella surfaces shows the presence of manubrium, then uh, presence of uh, canals, presence of gonads, presence of oral arms, and uh, uh, even the velarium. So they are carnivorous organisms. The marginal velarium shows presence of tentacles with the nematocysts. Aurelia is dioecious, sexes are separate, but no sexual dimorphism. Fertilization may be internal or external. The development includes a plan uh, planula larval stage, nothing but the indirect development. Now, the next important concept that we should remember is Ephyra larva. It is the larva of Aurelia. It shows the larva gets formed by a special phenomenon on a phenomenon in the development of Aurelia, which we call it as strobilization. So down I mean, towards the right side, there is a picture where male and female organisms will release their gametes. Ramate gametes undergo fusion to form zygote. Zygote will undergo mitotic divisions of cleavage to form blastula stage, then into a larval stage called planula larva. This planula larva, after a period of swimming, it stops further the swimming movement, attaches its, itself to the substratum. So after it binds to a substratum, the body undergoes morph uh, uh, morphological changes 
to form a saucer shaped structure which we call it as a strobila structure. This strobila now shows breaking at its free end uh, uh, which we call it as a skyphistoma, okay, skyphistoma stage and each of the uh, layer what it gets detaches uh, with the transverse ring like constrictions that are formed which we call it as strobila. So, skyphostoma will break up to form finger like, uh, I am sorry, um, a saucer like structures which are uh, thrown out by the process of strobilization. So, each of these strobila that comes out will get into the, I mean it will change itself into the uh, structure called as ephyra larva. So, ephyra larva are formed from uh, the structure of skyphostoma. If the temperature is low, many number of ephyra are formed at a time. So, this is called as polydisc strobilization. When the food availability is less, temperature and also when temperature is high, only one ephyra comes out from this uh, skyphostoma by the process of strobilization. A single ephyra larva looks like this. So, this is the diagram that you should follow. Students here the systematic position of Aurelia only you are supposed to write, but the diagram part is related to ephyra that you are supposed to write here. Now, ephyra is a microscopic gelatinous or transparent structure which shows tetramerous symmetry. I mean to say at four sides if you could divide all the four parts will resemble same. The edge of its umbrella body has eight bifid lobes. So, it, it, it shows the presence of eight bifid lobes. Bifid means it is forked like this. So, eight lobes are seen which are supported internally by means of a, a radial and the ad radial uh, structures or canals within. The distal end of each bifid lobe consists of a pair of lapids with the sensory structures within. The central cavity is provided with a quadrangular mouth. The mouth will lead into a short tubular structure called manubrium. The organism freely swims in the water and feeds upon the planktonic organisms like protozoans, uh, etc. They help, the lapids help in catching the food uh, uh, as the prey and that will be taken to the region of the mouth for the process of ingestion. So, this is about the importance of ephyra larva. The points that you will have to remember here is ephyra larva is the larva of Arelia. It is formed by the process called as strobilization from the structure of Skyphostoma. It is a microscopic gelatinous tetramerous symmetry organism. It shows eight bifid lobes which are supported by radial and adradial clefts. Each of the bilobed or bifid lobe consists of lapids with a sensory structure within which we call it as a tentaculosis. So, they have at its central the quadrangular mouth with the manubrium tube helps in the feeding on protozoans. The next organism that we are going to study is Physalia, which is commonly called as Portuguese man of war. It is commonly called as Portuguese man of war. The reason is that this organism resembles like that of the soldiers of Portuguese um, army who suddenly appear on the uh, appear in front of the enemies. So, like this they also in group suddenly they appear or suddenly they uh, get into or sink into the water. Systematic position of them is Celenterata phylum, class Hydrozoa, order Siphonophora, genus is Physalia physalias. It is a colonial form. When I say colony, it is a group of zooid that remains together. It is a free swimming marine form. It has got a transparent body which is bluish or pinkish balloon like. 
It has a large pink colored float or nematopore at its top, which is almost like that of a cap or a balloon. This nematopore has at its lower surface the zooids hanging or attaching. And inside of this float consists of gas, uh, a pair of gas glands that helps in the synthesis of uh, gases like 97% uh, of uh, um, nitrogen, argon, oxygen, etc. So that whenever gases produce the balloon or the nematopore or float gets filled within the gas and it makes easier buoyancy of the colony or floating of the colony. The colony is polymorphic. Poly means many. So many different types of zooids are attached to it in bunches. It includes three types of zooids. Number one, gastrozooid. Number two, gonozooid. Number three, dactylozooids. Excuse me. Gastrozooids have distinct mouth but without tentacles because dactylozooids are there for the function. This gastrozooids involves in the process of nutrition. So they are tubular structures with the mouth uh, within which it can produce the enzymes. Dactylozooids are long thread-like structures which are of 10 meters length sometimes to 30 meters also. These long tentacles continuously fishes through the water, mean to say um, it has got tentacles attached over it, I'm sorry, um, each tentacle has uh, uh, stings or the nematocysts attached over it and this um, nematocysts have venom filled structures within which will sting the prey, paralyze the prey, kill the prey and it will be taken inside as the food. So they are the, uh, they feed on the larval squids as well as the fishes. There are also contractile cells in each of the tentacles which will help in dragging the prey to the uh, uh, opening of the digestive uh, uh, polyps, nothing but the gastrozoites. So that's the importance of gastrozoites and dactylozoites. So gastrozoites inside has the secretory cells that will secrete the enzymes, helps in breaking down of proteins carbohydrates and even fats. So beside is one more diagram related to how exactly the float along with its uh, zooids attaching down is. The third type of zooids are gonozooids that helps in the reproduction. So they produce the reproductive cells. Physalia are said to be uh, dioecious, mean to say male and female are separate. They are unisexual otherwise. If it is a male, they will produce the testicle, they will have testis gonads and produces sperms. If it is a female, it will have gonads of ovary, synthesizes the ova. So each gonozoid will have the cells of the respective gonads called gonopores. The gametes after the maturation are released into the water like what we have learnt earlier in Arelia and undergoes the external fertilization. So what are the points that we remember of Physalia? It is colonial free swimming marine form, bluish to pinkish uh, uh, in colour, shows the presence of a float or nematopore with the gas gland and down attaching are three polymorphic zooids gastrozoite for nutrition, gonozoite for reproduction and dactylozoites for um, uh, uh, defense as well as uh, ingestion of food. So the physelia is dioecious but male and female are separate. So this is about the importance of um, um, the specimens related to sea lenterates. Thank you all students.